welcome uh, to thank the speakers for coming out and um, still willing to um, share their science with us. Uh, we also want to give thanks to the Gulf Mexico Research Initiative who um, provides um, our funding and obviously the University of Southern Mississippi um, for letting us use this great new facilities that they have. So I'm just going to give a quick background. I'm sure most of you have heard of our team. Um, we're a partnership between Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative and Sea Grant. Um, we've been asked to share oil spill science with folks, uh, different target audiences throughout the Gulf community and nationally as well, and bring the science to folks who use it, um, not just for their daily lives, but also in their jobs. Um, and so I just want to give a really quick overview, uh, mainly just to, to let you all know, um, I'm sure you all have seen, most of you have seen this picture of all of us, but we did just hire a new person, Missy, who's over here. Um, she will be taking over our um, Mississippi, Alabama. Oh, okay. Um, she's with uh, Mississippi, Alabama Sea Grant, and her office is located in Mobile, Alabama. So um, she will be the new contact for the folks in those two states. Um, and so what do we do and how do we do it? So we are two-way engagement. Um, we usually take the initial steps of our project. We went and, okay, and now it's on automatic timing. Technology's great. <laughs> um, Two-way two engagement, we, we go out and get audience input from our target audiences and respond to their needs. And how do we do that? We try to, uh, well, we read peer-reviewed research and share it through publications, which if you look behind the room, there's a whole table worth of publications that we've produced, and we have been told that or Tara has told me that if you want to take them, please do. We don't want to cart any of them back. Um, and we actually do offer large amounts of publications. So if you are having an event and there's a publication that would be suited for your event and you would like a large amount, you can email Tara and we will ship them out to you um, for you to share with the folks that you're going to um, uh, be working with during your event. So feel free to look back there. Take as many as you want. If you do have a, a certain pub that you would like, feel free to talk to Tara. She's right here in the light blue shirt. Um, and she will get your information to go ahead and mail that out to you. Um, and so then we also not only have the publications, but we have these seminars like this where we bring in scientists again to share their science with um, our audience. Um, and then we just loop it all back. During these um, seminars, we do get we, we have evaluations and we ask folks to um, give us their input, constructive criticism, anything that can continue to provide us information for what our target audience needs are. And then we'll go back, look at those, and again, try to answer questions that they might still have, do another publication, or get, maybe get another idea for another seminar for the future, because folks have still a few you know, specific questions about oil still. So it's just a big loop. And then also, you can go to our website. Um, on our website, we have all of our past seminars recorded. Um, and they are available from every single seminar that we've done. Um, so you can go back to the recordings and view specific speakers. Um, all our publications are also online. So if you PDFs available, you can download them and print them out your, um, in your office or wherever you'd like. If you need a hard copy, if they're all located there. So technology used to uh, study oil spills. I'm just going to quick brief overview because our speakers are going to do a much better job talking about this than I am. Um, so of course we have satellites and aerial technology. Um, you know, satellites have been used and equipped with specific instruments and sensors to help study oil spills, and there's been a lot of great science coming out from that. Um, they've been used to identify oil seeps and predict the movement of oil. Um, we have drones that have also been used to examine how oil would move in surf zones and out in the open uh, gulf. The Aerostat, which is a great um, piece of technology which Brian's going to talk about a little bit later, has also been used to, um, uh, in different ways to capture images and videos. Um, real-time data. Um, so that's the, some of the aerial technology that you'll be hearing about today. And then we have surface technology, the sail drone. Um, we have drifters that, of course, have been used, again, to study the movement of oil on the surface. Drifters have been used extensively to study the ocean currents and to help modelers figure out what the currents are doing um, so they can predict the, the transport of pollutants. Um, better for future spills if that were to ever happen, but basically just to provide them data to input into their models to make them a little more accurate um, when predicting the movement of oil or anything, actually, any pollutant in the surface and the movement of currents. The more data we get, the better understanding we have of these surface currents, which is very helpful to not only modelers, but obviously responders as well. Um, and then underwater vehicles, I'm sure most of you have heard of the Sentry, and then we have ROVs and 
um, the ALVIN that have all been used to study oil impact at the deep sea. Um, we have, uh, I actually produced a technology publication that covers these three um, vehicles. It's printed out over there and it talks about some of the science of how this technology was used to study deep sea corals and go back and look at um, impact the corals prior. Well, look at, take pictures of corals prior to deep water horizon and then um, take pictures of the same site later and it talks about the impact that the oil spill had on the corals. So um, that was just a quick overview of some of the technology. Um, and how did we come up with this particular seminar? So back, uh, actually almost exactly two years ago, we were at the University of Miami and we had an idea um, to, um, again, highlight some of the technology. Um, we had molecular techniques that came, or a person speak about molecular techniques. Um, we had them come talk about the sustain lab that's located at the University of Miami and how they use that to study um, not only how their drifters work, but how oil is dispersed at the um, surface of the water. Um, we had a speaker come talk about marine technology used to study marine snow and oil. Again, satellites to track oil. And then we also highlighted the fish treadmill um, from Dr. Martin Grossell's lab. Um, and then that was a great hit. After the seminar, we were actually allowed to tour um, the labs and we got to go to the Mahi Mahi hatchery and view how they do that and how all that comes to, into their science. And uh, we didn't see the fish treadmill, but there was a video of it, so that was kind of fun. Uh, and then we also got to, if you look down at the picture, um, that's the sustain lab, the big wave tank that is located at the University of Miami. And we got to tour that and see how that works as well. Um, the evaluations from that seminar were so successful, we decided to do a technology too, but now study a different type of technology. So that's how uh, we came here today to this seminar. So our purpose, um, of course, is to build off the success of part one, which I had just mentioned, um, share new science and information on the technology, and then discuss research and explore new ideas. Um, we've had, we have about two breaks within the, within the um, agenda, so we hope that you guys use that break to um, network and talk and maybe come up with new ideas, speak with us about some things that you guys are either interested in or how we can help or bring more science to you all um, and share that science in a way that's going to help you all with your jobs or even just in everyday lives. So just a quick uh, go over the agenda. Uh, so in the morning session we'll be talking about drifters, sail drones, drones, and surveillance. Um, and we're going to go through all our speakers and then we'll have a question and answer panel. So we'll bring the speakers that are actually here physically with us today up here and have a 20 minute question and answer panel where you guys can um, ask them any questions that you would like. We're going to have lunch um, and then the afternoon session will cover in situ burning and the ocean weather lab. And then again, we'll do another marine, uh, excuse me, question and answer panel discussion. Um, and then after that, um, I know I have wrap-ups and evaluations at the end, but we'll do the evaluations before we go out on the tours. That way we don't have to try to corral you guys back in here. Um, but they have been so gracious enough, the folks here at the MEC, to offer a walking tour to go visit the outdoor classrooms and just show you the building because this is a very new facility that um, they are very proud of. And we would like everybody um, to share in that and be able to see it because it is very large. This isn't the only locate, the only building. There's a few classes out there and here, and, they, and there's some walking trails and things that um, we think you guys would enjoy. 